Good morning students, this is Mrs. Heisenbuttel and today I'm going to show you how to, uh, I'm going to basically walk you through how to do a CO2 drag star design because this is kind of new for some of you, some of you had Inventor last year and some didn't. So I'm kind of going to give you a basic little rundown on it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open the template file and that is on the Y drive underneath my name, Science of Technology, it's called Dragster Body One. But being a student, once you open this, um, you can't save it back to the Y drive. You have to put it on your U drive. So I would recommend immediately going to the I menu, the application menu, clicking on Save As, go select your U drive. Mine has my name, yours will have your ID number, and give it some kind of a name. In this case, I'm just gonna call it 2013. And I'm going to hit save, and I already have one because obviously I've done this before. So and there we go, it's all saved, and it's on my U drive. And I have a general idea in my head what I want my car to look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch. And I just did a left click, the last selection was create sketch. So I'm going to, and I need to create a sketch over here. And notice that my cube and my, my view cube and my, um, my little uh, navigation bar are here but I just have to kind of scroll over them for them to show up which is fine so uh, notice that up here I need to see the whole ribbon to really see all my pictures so I just click the little arrow to bring my ribbon back up so I'm gonna use a spline some of you might decide you want to use something else um, cut straight lines that's fine I personally kind of like the idea of a nice rounded spline effect but the more points I put into my spline the better off I will be in the end because I will be able to manage it a little bit better and slide things around I get more control over what the spline actually looks like if I put more points on the spline so I'm gonna just double check that I'm touching a line down here I am and there it is my hand ah there it goes I gotta also double check that I'm touching a line over here and I am okay so I'm gonna zoom back out and now what I'm gonna do is uh, finish my sketch and I should be able to now click on this click on this upper part here and cut it out it's not as easy as it sounds so first off, I'm going to tell it I want to extrude something. I want to extrude that part, and it wants to go out instantly, so I need to come over here, tell it I want to cut. I don't want distance. I just want to cut all the way through. And so I do that by using the actual extrude box over here. I don't want to, I don't want to use this little thing down here in the bottom because, frankly, that's annoying. And it doesn't do half the stuff I need to do. So I'm going to hit OK, and now you can see when I turn it to the front, that I have cut and shaped it. Not a ton, but a little bit. So next step is, okay, well that's great and all well and fine and everything, but I need to put my axle holes in. So I'm gonna create another sketch on the front view. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to put down some axles. And I'm gonna do that axle holes by putting in points. And I put in two points and then I'm just gonna hit okay and be done. Whoops. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. There we go. So I actually got an extra one in there, which didn't need. So I'm going to zoom out just a smidge so I can see a little bit better. And I have to dimension these to make sure they're the right distance. So I pull it off, and it says it's 5.971 millimeters off the bottom. And I'm looking at my design envelope for my car, and it says that it has to be somewhere between 5 and 8 millimeters from the bottom of the car. It's like, okay, well, that's, let's just round it to six. It shifts it ever so slightly. So then I'm going to do the same thing over here and make that one six. So it's up six off the bottom. Now I'm going to click my point and I'm going to click the little bit there in the front and it says it's 41 and a half or so millimeters from the end. And I, again, I look at my design envelope and see that it has to be between 15 and 100 millimeters from the end. That's not a bad spot for it. I'm actually just gonna round it and call it 40, which scooches it over slightly. So I'm gonna do that on the back as well. And again, 
the back also has to be uh, 15 to 100 off the back end so I'm gonna call it 40 and now I'm gonna turn it and you're gonna say why is she turning it because I'm trying to see how close I am I actually need it more than 40 is what I'm thinking I want it to be further up than that because I don't want it to be right underneath my um, I don't want it to be right underneath the power plant so I'm gonna make it 45 that's not a huge difference it's a little bit of a difference well maybe we'll go all the way up to 50 so and I can always go back and change my sketch and move it around later if I decide I don't like it so I'm gonna finish the sketch because I've got my points where I want them there's my home view and now I'm gonna click on one of the points and I'm going to tell it I want to make a hole I want to make a three millimeter hole and I want to do it on centers so I have to click both and so now it'll drill through both of them and I'm going to scooch my window out of the way and see if I can't turn that yeah that looks like it's pretty good I mean it's under but it's not under by much it should be all right so I'm going to hit OK and now I have holes that go all the way through so now I decide, okay, well, I kind of want to make my wheels in the back sort of sit in a little bit because, you know, let's face it, that's kind of cool looking. So I'm going to create a sketch, and this time I'm going to make a circle because I need to cut it in, but not all the way through, obviously. And I'm going to hit OK here. And now I'm going to go grab my dimension tool and pull this off. And I know that my wheels are going to be 40 millimeters around so I'm actually going to make my little hole 42 millimeters in diameter and you say okay but it moved it yeah I know it's okay so now I'm going to click on concentric and if I click on this and that oh hold on it didn't like that so give it a sec so apparently I need to zoom in and make sure I get the right one zoom in and click no, nope, won't do it. All right, well, fine. We'll do it the hard way. So I will just simply grab the center of my circle, which should, uh, doesn't want to let go. Okay, so I can dimension this to that center point and make that zero. Um, and then I can dimension this down to there and make that oh won't let me okay so it doesn't like that and I can tell you why it's because it accidentally moved the stupid circle onto a line and once it does that then it locks it onto that line so I'm just going to draw my circle up here and now I'm going to dimension it again just to make life easier and I'm going to make it 42 millimeters and now I should be able to grab the center Oh, after I get out of dimension. Grab the center and now I can line it up right there. And now you can see it lines up perfectly. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna basically drill in slightly. So I'm gonna finish the sketch, go back to my home view, which is there, and I'm going to do a reverse extrude. So I'm gonna extrude that, but not out. I wanna cut in and I don't wanna cut in a super far distance. I really only want to cut in, I'm going to say a couple of millimeters because I just want the wheels to stick out a little bit and stick in a little bit. So I'm going to say maybe eight millimeters, although that might be pushing my luck. I think maybe I'll just do five to start with and then we'll see how that looks. So you see how it cut it? Just a tiny bit. Now I need to do one on the other side. So I'm going to come over here and create a sketch on this side now. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to create this circle all the way off. I'm going to dimension it and I'm going to call it 42 millimeters. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit, grab the center. Whoops, once I'm done dimensioning, grab the center and drop it right on. So that should put it right where I want it in the center of my axle hole. And now I can finish my sketch and I can come over here and sort of twist it around so I can kind of get a good, better view of it. Extrude the circle backwards as a cut five millimeters and then hit okay. And so now what I have is that.
so now it's cut nicely and it's all snazzy but let's say the next thing I want to do is I want to put something up here well because it's now all curvy I can't but I sort of can so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up here to the plane feature and I'm going to put a plane on here and I'm going to open up the origin and I'm going to tell that I want to put the plane on the XZ area there and see how I can grab these little yellow circles and I can drag this sucker up here. So what I want is I need it to be up and basically what this is doing is giving me a flat surface to draw a shape on. So now I hit OK. Now I can come here, click on the, again on that circle and create a sketch on there. And notice what it does is it flips it over so I can create a sketch on the top of my car that is now flat. So I'm going to create a rectangle of some unknown indeterminate size and then I'm going to dimension it and let's see I know I can't have it okay so that gives me a good length it's not bad and then I'm going to click here and click there and see if I can't get it it doesn't want to do that hmm well that's odd all right so yeah I know thank you so I want to click and get the dimensions there so that says it's 10 I need it to be at least 13 millimeters because I'm looking at it and it says my the minimum body width at any point is like 13 millimeters. So I have to make sure that it's at least 13, which means I also need it to be 13 from there to there. And it won't do that correctly. So we'll hit cancel and let's see if I can get it to do that. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can get from there to there to come off. Nope, doesn't want to. All right, so, oh, that's because I'm not in dimension. That would probably help. So we'll pull this off and it's 42. I know you can't dimension it, it's okay. So let's try starting there, coming here. Nope, doesn't want to do that. Yeah, I know, thank you. So what I know is that if this is 42, which it is. So then I just basically sit there and do a little bit of math and say, okay, it needs to be 13 on both sides. So if I subtract out the 13, so 13 and 13 is 26, so that's um, 16. So the maximum width that this can be is 16. So I'm going to make it 16 millimeters and say, okay, great. And I've got it positioned pretty much the way I want it, I think. I'm going to turn it slightly. You know what? That's not going to... Oh, it is. It's going to cut into my axle. Okay. So I need to back this up a little bit. So instead of 181, we'll do 160. And that will shorten that up. And now when I turn it... Okay. And it's still kind of close to my axle, but... I think we'll be okay. Well, I could slide it back a little bit more. Well, but I don't want to get too far back. So what I could do is come back to the top view, scooch in just a little bit, and I can grab an edge and see if I can maneuver this back just a bit because I don't want to get too close to my power plant. So then I can finish my sketch. And now I can click on this, and even though it is not actually attached, it's going to still cut all the way through my car. So I just did a cut and said instead of a distance, just go all the way, hit OK. And now I can come over here to the work plane, right click on it, and make it invisible by turning visibility off, and I can spin it. So you see, I've got that in there. Now I can go in and camphor it and fill it it and make everything all nice and rounded. But at this point, you get the general idea of how I designed my car and how I got something on a curved surface. And you can see I've cut away enough material that hopefully it will be light enough. And I've checked all of my stuff to make sure that everything is going to be the right size for what I'm trying to do.